सो वेलकम बैक नाउ वी विल डिस्कस द सोल्यूशन ऑफ मैक्सवेल इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव इक्वेशन दैट वी हैव डिराइव इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर सो दिस वॉज मैक्सवेल इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव इक्वेशन हेयर साई स्टैंड फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड और मैग्नेटिक फील्ड साई इज ऑल्सो कार्ड वेव फंक्शन देर फॉर प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इन केस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक वेव वेव फंक्शन इज आइदर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड और मैग्नेटिक फील्ड नाउ इक्वेशन नंबर फोर्टीन इज ए सेकंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन देर फॉर इट्स सोल्यूशन मस्ट कंटेन टू कॉन्स्टेंट्स ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन so there are many solutions of this uh, equation many different types of solutions of this equation but one of the famous solution that is used we will be discussing here will be this one that is psi is equal to psi 0 sin kt by mu 0 epsilon 0 minus k dot r here psi 0 is first constant of integration and k or k vector is a second constant of integration now we know that psi stands for electric field or magnetic field therefore psi 0 will also stand for electric field or magnetic field because we know that sin function itself is uh, unitless therefore if psi is electric field then psi 0 has to be electric field if psi is magnetic field then psi 0 has to be magnetic field so psi 0 will be maximum value of electric field or magnetic field so therefore it can be either e0 or b0 where e0 is a maximum value of electric field in the electromagnetic wave it is also called electric field amplitude and b0 is the maximum value of magnetic field and it is called magnetic field amplitude and uh, the quantity k is actually well known factor it is called propagation constant it is a vector quantity k is a vector quantity therefore it will have three components kx ky and kz it is usually written as k vector is equal to kx i cap plus ky j cap plus kz k cap it is called propagation constant and we know from our school physics that uh, k which is magnitude of the propagation constant it is equal to 2 pi by lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave you have to remember this relation for uh, understanding further part of this uh, lecture so we have not derived equation number 15 which is solution of equation number 14 however we can verify that equation number 15 is a true solution of equation number 14 uh, so this was equation number 14 and this is the solution that we have proposed for equation number 14 let us now verify whether equation 15 satisfies equation 14 or not now we will take the partial derivative of psi from equation number 14 with respect to x when we will take its derivative since psi 0 it is a constant quantity so therefore it will come out of the differentiation derivative of sin will become cos argument will remain same and it has to be multiplied by the partial derivative with respect to x of the argument of the sin which is this factor since derivative is partial with respect to x therefore t and y and z has to be taken as constants now we know that k dot r which is equal to kx into x plus ky into y plus kz into z so therefore if you take partial derivative of k dot r with respect to x then it will be simply equal to kx so we will take this derivative as 0 and this derivative will be kx you will get k 0 minus kx and this minus kx will be written outside of this function in the next step so therefore first derivative of psi with respect to x is minus kx psi 0 cos of this factor now we want to find its second derivative so we will again differentiate this quantity with respect to x partially and therefore we must remember that we have to keep t y and z as constants let us see what happens when we take its second derivative with respect to x so on differentiating with respect to x this minus kx will remain as such psi 0 again it is a constant quantity it will remain as such and derivative of cos will be minus sin which will make this minus into plus which is written here so you can see i have written here minus as plus and uh, <coughs> the derivative of argument will again give me another factor minus kx and uh, when cos becomes minus sin then this quantity is nothing but it is a wave function psi as such so on simplification we can write that curly 2 psi upon curly x2 is nothing but this is actually kx this is minus kx it will be minus kx square and the whole quantity remaining quantity is actually psi so we have found the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to x this is how we can write the second order derivative without solving with respect to y and this will be the second order partial derivative with respect to z 
Now we can add equation number 16, 17 and 18. On adding equation number 16, 17 and 18, left hand side will become del square psi. Actually curly 2 psi by curly x square plus curly 2 psi by curly y square plus curly 2 psi by curly z square is nothing but del square psi. And on the right hand side, this minus will be common. This we have written here. You can see here minus is common. And sum of kx square plus ky square plus kz square will be nothing. But it will be equal to square of the magnitude of k. So the equation number 19 gives me expression for del square psi. Let us now again go to equation number 14 and see what else has to be evaluated. You can see in the equation number 14, we need to calculate del square psi that we have already found in equation number 19. Next, we need to calculate a second order derivative of psi with respect to t. And it has to be again a partial derivative. So it means while calculating the derivative with respect to t, we will keep x, y and z as uh, constants because derivative is a partial derivative. Let us now do this task and we will again please remember we will remember use this value of psi which is supposed to be from actually the uh, solution of equation number 14. Okay when we will differentiate psi with respect to t the derivative of sine will become cos and the multiplier of t is actually k divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So when we will take the derivative of argument this factor will come out. And the derivative of this quantity will be 0 because it does not contain any time factor. So therefore this k and mu 0 epsilon 0 will be written out after differentiating. But we need second order derivative. So we will differentiate this quantity again with respect to t. When we will do that, this quantity is a constant. It will remain as such and derivative of cos will become minus sign. And during the derivative of the argument, this quantity k divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 will again come out. Let us see. So when we differentiate this quantity, they, you can see it is coming here. This minus sign is because of the fact that cos has become minus sign. Now we will pull up both of these quantities. So k into k will become k square and this uh, multiplication of these two factors will uh, remove the square root and it will be uh, minus k square in fact. So second order derivative will be minus k square by mu 0 epsilon 0 psi into sign of this quantity but we know that this quantity is nothing but the wave function so the simplification will give us that curly 2 psi upon curly t square is equal to minus k square by mu 0 epsilon 0 into psi now we have already found the derivative del square psi and here we have just found the derivative curly 2 psi by curly t square now both of these derivatives can be inserted into equation number 14. Let me show you equation number 14 again. So here we will insert the value of del square psi and here we will insert the value of curly 2 psi by curly t square. Remember this factor is already there so it has to be multiplied with that value. So let us see what happens whether this uh, equation number 15 satisfies equation number 14 or not. Let us put these values which we have obtained just obtained in equation number 14 back. So when we will put these values in equation number 14 the left hand side will become minus k square then it, it was minus mu naught epsilon naught square already there and this factor was minus k square by mu 0 epsilon 0 into psi just as we have found in equation number 20 and right hand side of equation 14 was 0. On solving we will get 0 equal to 0 so it means left hand side is equal to right hand side hence uh, equation number 15 is a true solution of uh, equation number 14 because uh, uh, equation 15 is satisfying equation number 14. But if we carefully analyze equation number 15, we see that uh, it is actually resembling with the general equation of a progressive wave which is traveling in three dimensional space. We know from school physics that the general equation of a progressive wave is given by y equals a sin omega t minus k vector dot r vector where k vector is propagation constant, omega is angular frequency and A is amplitude and Y is called wave function or it is also called displacement in school physics and R is the position vector of the point where wave is being studied and K vector is the direction in which the wave is moving. So we can see equation number 15 is resembling with equation number 21 just if we make following substitutions. Here the role of Y is played by psi which is electric field or magnetic field role of A is played by psi 0 which is maximum value of electric field or magnetic field and role of angular frequency omega is played by k divided by mu 0 epsilon 0 and k is actually nothing but propagation constant. Let us now find the velocity of electromagnetic waves in vacuum and let us see 
whether electromagnetic waves can travel in vacuum or not. So for reference, I have written here again the electromagnetic wave equation. We have just seen that the solution of uh, equation number 14 is actually the equation number 21. Here I have written it here by mistake as y. We can write it as a psi actually where a is uh, we have just seen that a is actually psi 0 and omega is actually k divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So these values we have already discussed. So omega is equal to k divided by mu 0 and epsilon 0. k is propagation constant. So let vp is the phase velocity which is the velocity of electromagnetic wave in vacuum. We know that for any progressive wave phase velocity is always equal to the product of frequency and wavelength. If frequency is new and wavelength is lambda then the formula for phase velocity vp will be actually nu into lambda. So we also know that the angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi nu and we also know that the propagation constant k is actually 2 pi by lambda. So what we will do in the equation number 22, we will multiply and divide on the right hand side by 2 pi. When we do so, this nu lambda will become 2 pi nu lambda by 2 pi and on just uh, adjusting the terms, we can write vp equal to actually omega by k. But we know that actually omega is k divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So we are going to put this value of omega here in this equation. On putting this value of omega, the k and k will get cancelled. And finally, we will get the expression for speed of electromagnetic waves in vacuum to be vp equal to 1 divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. But mu 0 and epsilon 0 are standard constants. Let us put their values. In this equation number 23, we know that mu 0 is actually 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7 tesla meter per ampere. We also know that epsilon 0 is actually 8.854 into 10 raised to power minus 12 coulomb square per newton per square meter. If we put these values here, then surprisingly the answer comes to be 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. This is nothing but it is actually the speed of light in vacuum. So with this uh, value of vp which is equal to speed of light in vacuum we can draw two conclusions the first conclusion is that electromagnetic waves can travel in vacuum they do not require any medium for propagation so this result actually cleared misunderstanding among scientific community because initially it was thought that even electromagnetic waves require medium for propagating and light requires medium for propagation but uh, this value is not zero. If uh, electromagnetic waves could not travel in vacuum, of, then the speed of electromagnetic waves in vacuum should have been zero. But actually it is uh, uh, not zero, rather it is equal to speed of uh, light in the vacuum. So since the uh, speed of light is written by symbol C instead of uh, Vp, therefore uh, equation number 23 can also be written as C equal to 1 divided by square root of mu zero of sin zero. So the symbol Vp is actually now replaced by symbol C because of the fact that Vp came out to be equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. Hence, electromagnetic waves can travel in vacuum and their speed in vacuum is equal to speed of light. Moreover, this, this result that the speed of electromagnetic waves in vacuum is equal to speed of light also tells us that light is also an electromagnetic wave. So, I will stop here. Thank you.